Hello, and welcome back to PackView's Amazon DSP onboarding course. And in this video, I want to talk about media plans. So the concept of a media plan, if you're familiar with programmatic advertising, then you probably know all about media plans, okay? If this is new to you, then think of it as like a launch book or a playbook so that you can conduct research and have a plan for when you go to launch. So what I'm gonna do in this video is create a media plan from scratch. Before we jump in, I think there's a few core benefits as to why you want to use a media plan. The biggest one is that it just helps you stay organized as you launch your campaigns and as you run your campaigns. You'll be able to set and track your campaign budget. And then the research that you conduct upfront is going to allow you to have a better understanding of your audience, which makes targeting more effective. Let's say that I'm going to be advertising for the brand Bose. Bose's budget is going to be 250K. Our flight time is going to be for Q4 2022. Now the next step is what are the products I'm gonna advertise? In this example, I'm just gonna go shotgun approach, find a few different product categories that seem to be crushing for Bose. We've got over the ear headphones, and I'm just gonna grab the quiet comforts. I'm gonna grab the quiet comfort earbuds, and we'll also do portable Bluetooth speakers. I might actually have just a list of products that are the over the ear headphones that I want to use and have an ASIN list. I've got my list of ASINs that are all over the ear headphones, and then I've got my list of earbuds that are over the ear earbuds, and I've got my list of speakers that I want to advertise. I know exactly which products I want to advertise now, but now I need to allocate my budget to these different products. I'm just going to split it up evenly to make this super simple. And I'm just going to say you get 80,000. So one of these gets 90. So when you're building your media plan, something you would want to include is a goal. And for this example, we're going to say product specific. This is our budget budget for each product. And now we have our goal. For the over-the-ear headphones, I want new to brand customers. For my earbuds, defend market share. And for my headphones, I want efficiency. So we know what our goals are, and now I'm gonna say what my KPIs are. KPIs for new to brand, new to brand sales. My KPIs for defending market share, we're just gonna use our share of voice data within PackView and my efficiency KPI is gonna be ROAS. And now it's time to actually start building the strategy a little bit, or, and that's gonna be, what's my targeting? What targeting is going to align with each one of my goals? I think a great way to do this is just to break this up into two halves. And we'll call this remarketing, and we'll call this prospecting. Now we have our targeting column, and we just broke it out into those really simple categories of, is it remarketing? Are we interacting with people who are already familiar with our brand and our products, or are we prospecting completely new to brand, right? And then I also added an audience column. So this is like the audience type, specifically who are the people that we're targeting. So working from the bottom of the funnel up, the person closest to buying the product is going to be someone who recently viewed the product. We have product viewers to start off our remarketing. And then the next most likely person to purchase our product is probably gonna be someone who's already familiar with our brand. If someone has bought the earbuds, maybe they'll be interested in the headphones. Okay, so upper half of the funnel, we're talking about prospecting. These people don't know anything about your brand or your products. So conquesting your competitors. This is if somebody has looked at your competitor's product but hasn't purchased it yet, then there's still a chance that you can sneak in there and capture that sale. In general, conquesting is an expensive endeavor but it's an important one because you put pressure on your competitors to defend their listings. The in-market and the lifestyle audience types, those will be pulled from doing an overlap report. I'm just gonna say audience details here, and that's gonna be the things that I mentioned. So product viewers, last 30 day viewer, not purchaser. So people who have viewed and not purchased, brand across seller, last 365 brand purchase, not product purchase. So someone who has bought from Bose, but hasn't bought the specific ASINs within this part of the media plan. And then contextual, we would just say exclude purchasers. Okay, conquesting competitor brands. Okay, and then in market over ear headphone, lifestyle, electronics. With in market and lifestyle, you need to pull those from the audience overlap report. 
these are pre-built audiences within Amazon. Here's what we're advertising, but how do we want it to look? So the next thing is going to be the creative, okay? So in general, when you're just bottom of the funnel, usually, I think we can just assume that this is gonna be REC, which is responsive e-commerce creative. Basically, a responsive e-commerce creative looks just like a classic Amazon ad. This could even be one. This is a custom image with that, that could be a responsive e-commerce creative, but basically it's just what you're used to seeing, the price, the reviews, and a call to action like shop now or learn more or something, and then an image of the product, REC. Now for these other items, we could use responsive e-commerce creatives, but you think about it, like here I am scrolling through the page while it's more relevant to what I'm searching for than this creative, which one grabs your attention? This one, right? So we'll just say custom rec or custom creative. Part of the beauty of programmatic advertising is that you get to design what that customer sees when they see it. Making a strong impression is something that's important if you have the creative assets to do so. Okay, so the last thing is going to be supply. Where do we want our ads to show up? Do we want them to be in positions like this on Amazon? Um, or do we also want to be off of Amazon? If you're just getting started, then just start with Amazon. The further you get away from Amazon.com, the further you get away from a customer with a credit card in hand ready to buy something. For this example, that we're just going to start with uh, Amazon O and O. So the last thing to do on this media plan, and we can call it a wrap, is throwing in a budget allocation. Okay, and this is going to be for remarketing and prospecting. A lot of times what you do is just use percentages. Okay, so if our goal is new to brand customers, then the majority of our budget needs to be going towards prospecting. So of my $90,000 budget for over your headphones, I wanna spend 80% on prospecting. Okay, so I'm gonna say 72K and then I'll spend the remaining 18K on remarketing. The reason why I'm not gonna go 100% of my budget into prospecting is because prospecting is hard. No matter how big the brand, it's a challenge, right? Think of prospecting as like you are starting to curate a relationship with your customer, your potential customer, and it might take time to convince them. You still need that budget for remarketing because you need to be able to make impressions after that initial impression, you need to keep showing up to those new customers. That's why I'm doing kind of like an 80-20 rule here for new to brand customers. Okay, so then we have defending market share for the earbuds. Maybe we'll go a 50-50 approach. We're gonna do 40K for the prospecting and 40K for remarketing. We wanna be impressing new customers and bringing them into our funnel. And we also want to be remarketing to them. This is one of those campaigns that will be making a lot of changes as you go because you're gonna get the data, gathering insights that kind of change your opinion of, of what you're seeing. The last one is efficiency. So for efficiency, we're actually gonna put the majority of our budget towards remarketing because we wanna be as efficient as possible. $56,000 towards remarketing, the remaining 24,000 go to prospecting. That is a rough media plan. What did we do? We conducted research and analysis. We, take, we took a look at the category. We deep dived each one of these different product groupings and came up with kind of a rough strategy that we can now take to our client, take to our brand, take to stakeholders and say, here's a rough idea of what we can do to get started with DSP. It gives you the full vision of exactly what we're gonna do. Once you present this media plan, it can be a conversation. Hey, here's what we're thinking, here's the plan. And before launching, it's great to get approval and buy-in from stakeholders. This whole top section is kind of like our key information. So maybe some things that we want to consider down the road is geography. Are we focused on just the U.S.? Who are the stakeholders? Who are the points of contact that I'm going to be communicating this media plan to? Background information, maybe about the brand, about the category. These are one-time purchase products. Previous results. You know, what was the experience beforehand that the stakeholders have described to you? You can also start housing things like competitors. For the creative, maybe we want to include what the call to action is. The goal here is to define what we want the customer to do. So new to brand soul sales is the end goal, but we've got 72% of our, or we've got 72 grand going to prospecting. And maybe here our goal is to drive traffic. And our goal in remarketing is to convert leads. I'll add another column for 
visual specs, you know, if you want that custom rec, what should it look like? What you could do on another tab is create deliverables. If you need custom creatives, you know, what's needed to get this going. And the last thing might just be a timeline. So within the timeline, you've got categories like planning, which we're doing now, media planning, creative, launch, measurement, when does the campaign end? And are you going to kind of go with like an always on strategy or is this something that you're gonna recreate after the purpose? Okay, everybody, I hope that that was a helpful crash course on how to build a media plan, how to think about media plans. Um, what we can do is save this as a template within the course and you can download it if you would like to work off something like this. I think it's a pretty decent rough playbook that you can build off of. All sorts of cool things you could do. I hope this is a good rough draft and good luck.